Okay, so welcome to Math Study STEM 2020 Tips Questions Part One. So um, in this video, I'll cover like a few more topics uh, on uh, on financial math and also uh, statistics as well. So make sure you understand uh, the uh, concept and also the exam questions that might come up in your coming exam. And uh, also for part two, I'll I'll show you more videos and also like uh, harder questions as well. So stay tuned and let's get started. So the first question. It's about the uh, complex number. Uh, no, uh, about the uh, compound interest. Okay, so that's uh, that's most students uh, get quite confusing when they see like compound interest question. Whenever uh, the question asks you like compound monthly or maybe compound like every four year, right? So that makes you very confusing. So there are only two steps to do with the, the compound interest. But first, let us uh, read the question first. So Henry placed a thousand dollars in the bank, so which is C equals to one thousand, so the capital, and then pay the interest per annum, which is interest per year, right? Compound monthly. So what does that mean? Compound monthly. So it's not compound every year. So you get the money every month, right? So calculate the amount that we receive after ten years, right? Okay. So answer in two decimal places. So very simple. So first, uh, whenever you deal with uh, the compound interest, you have to determine two things, which is the interest rate and then the compound numbers, right? Because we know that the equation is C bracket 1 plus R power N, yeah? So how do you calculate the interest rate? So interest rate is very simple. So it's just 0 0.04, which is per year, but compound monthly, so you have to... Uh, calculate the monthly interest rate, which is divided by 12. Do you get that? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll just keep this number, and then the compound numbers because uh, now uh, it will re so now the amounts that Henry will receive is after 10 years, right? So we compound monthly basically uh, for for one year. Then you will have how many times? You have 12 times, right? So 12 times per year. How about 10 years? Then 10 years would be. 120 times. So, six. So, uh, for this question, um, I mean, it's the typical uh, questions for like uh, uh, the mass studies question. They will ask you the median, the mode, the Q1 and Q3. So, what you do is you can just make use of your calculator, right? So, uh, but first, before we use the calculator, we have to uh, understand what does that mean for, for the number right here. So, median means the 50%, so means the middle number, middle number, right? Mode means the most frequent number. So, and then Q1 is the lower quartile. So lower quartile, that means uh, the bottom 25%. And then Q3 is the upper quartile. So upper quartile, that means the top 25%. Okay, yeah. So uh, what you do is you can just go to list. Wait, so go to statistics and then we go to add it. So let me uh, type the whole thing again. Right, so we have list one right here. So just type in 20 and then 14 and then 5, 5 and then 15 and then 19, right? And then uh, we just go, um, we just go stat and then we go cal. And this is just one variable test, right? Okay, because we only have one row right here. So one variable statistics, and then we use the list one, and then we calculate the value. And you can see that. So you just you, you can just refer to the number right here. So Q1 is five. Q1 is five. And then uh, Q3 is 19. Yeah. And uh, let me see what else you get. The number is this. yeah so that's how you get q1 and q3 yeah but uh, i mean like how do you calculate the number of mode uh, i mean the value of mode so mode it will be just the most frequent number so you can just look at the the uh, the number right here which is five yeah because five appears two times and then how about the median so uh, i mean this one by no choice then we'll have to calculate by hand because uh, i mean uh, the calculator doesn't oh, wait the calculator already show you the median so you don't need to calculate so which is 14.5, yeah, 14.5, which is median. Okay, that's it. Okay, I understand that you want to know like what is the trick uh, on calculating this by hand, right, In, instead of using a calculator. So I'll show you one example because uh, for math studies, you can always use a calculator. So why risk calculate, calculate that by hand, right? So uh, for median, if you want to calculate by hand, I'll show you this example. So first step, you have to list out the whole number from small to big. 
So which is 5, 5, and then 14, 15, uh, 19, and 20, right? Because the middle number, so we know that you can see that middle number, which is this part, which is this value. But we don't have a number right here, so you consider the middle value of this 2. So 14 plus 15 divided by 2, then obviously you will get 14.5, okay? So I'll show you the calculation divided by 2. So that's why you get 14.5. But your calcula calculator already do the work for you, so you don't need to worry about like how to calculate this by hand. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. It will be now. Uh, uh, it will be the uh, chi square test. Okay. So I mean, uh, for this question, almost appear every year in the math studies exam. So how do you tackle this kind of question? It's very, very uh, mechanical and repetitive. So let me teach you the tricks. So first, uh, we know that the uh, research team uh, want to find out is there any relationship between the gender and the regular exercise, right? So that is the the research for. Yeah. So uh, we want to use the chi square test to uh, find out the value, find out the probability. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, they, they interview 400 people and the result is recorded below, right? So we have the male num uh, interested in regular exercise, 112 people, and the female interested in regular exercise, 96, right? So, and so on. So how do you find the null hypothesis? So we always, whenever you see this null hypothesis, that means we assume two things, they are independent. So independent event, that means uh, one won't affect the uh, another, yeah? So for example, like, uh, um, this um, this guy is doing um, exercise. I, I mean, the gender like male uh, doing exercise won't affect uh, won't affect females doing uh, the regular exercise. So they are the gen gender and the exercise. These two things they're independent events, right? So they won't affect each other. Yeah. So we always assume that. So then the relationship relationship between gender and regular exercise uh, is independent events. That's it. And then how about the al alternative uh, hypothesis? So the opposite of this. So they are not independent events. Okay, so just write out the whole equation, then you get this two marks. Easy. And then how do you find the chi square test value? So you just need to apply your GDC. Yeah, so how do you use this? So basically, you have to apply matrix. Yeah, so first go to second and the matrix. You put the matrix right here, and then you have to add the, the table one. So table A. So this is a, a row times column, right? So this number means row by column. So how many rows right here? So two rows. Row means horizontal. Yeah, so two by two. Column means two. And then after you get this, just plug in the number 112 and then 96 and then 88. That's it. And then we just go to statistics and then we go to um, we go to test, right? Because it's chi square test. And then we try to find out the chi square test column. And then we just click that. And we have observe A and just go calculate because we already typed the uh, table for A. And calculate that. So chi square is 0 0.0413. 0 0.00413. 3 SF. That is how you do the chi square test value. Yeah. So basically, just apply, just use your GDC to do the work. Very simple. And this is usually like a three to four marks questions. Okay, last questions right here. So coordinate geometry. So we have a straight line 2x plus 3y plus a, plus a equal to 0. Uh, line 2 and line 1, they're perpendicular. Find the gradient of line 2. So first, how do you find the gradient of the line 1? So you always remember, you need to find the slope. So the slope in terms of y equals mx plus c, you need to find the m, right? So rearrange the whole equation. So we look at this equation, 3y on the left-hand side, we move the whole thing to, to the right-hand side, minus, minus 2x, minus 8. And then whole thing divided by 3. So minus 2x divided by 3, minus 8 divided by 3, yeah? That, that is clear for you, right? So what is the gradient for line 2? The gradient for ml1 is equal to negative 2 over 3. And then the gradient for line 2, because whenever two lines are perpendicular, m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1. So just plug in the number, negative 2 over 3 times m equals to minus 1, yeah? So the m, you can say m2, the slope, the line, uh, line 2, right? And then just rearrange the equation. Multiply 3, so cancel out the negative first, and then multiply 3 to the right-hand side, divided by 2, 3 over 2, yeah? So the slope 2 is equal to 3 over 2. That's it. 
And then line one and line two, they intersect at the point x coordinate equals to five. So find the coordinates of the intersection point. So because we have the uh, equation, so first we know that intersection point, that means two equations, they intersect at one point. So we already have line one equation. I mean, uh, yeah, so for example, this one is line one, right? So we already have the equation, which is this, this whole thing. Then you just plug in the number five, then you will get the y value. Does that make sense to you? Because we have the equation. Whenever you have one value, then you can find the other value. So for example, like this is line one, and then we have the x coordinate is five. So what is the y value? Yeah, so just plug in the value. Uh, 2x and then plus 3, oh, 3y plus 8 equals to 0. So this is line 1. And then now we have x equals to 5. So 2 times 5 plus 3y plus 8 equals to 0. So this is just simple calculation. 3y plus, this is 10 plus 18 equals to 0. And then y is equal to how many? Negative 18 divided by 3. So negative 18 divided by 3, which is negative 6. Yeah? Okay, so we have the point, which is 5 and negative 6, and then finally, you are asked to find the, uh, the equation for, for the line 2. So y equals to mx plus c again. So m2 is equal to 3 over 2, and then what is the point for line 2? Because intersection point applies to both lines. So that means the point would be 5 and negative 6, and then just apply y equals to mx plus c, right? So y is negative 6, and then m is equal to 3 over 2, and then the point x is right here, and then you find c, right? So uh, this is 15 over 2, which is 7.5 for c, and then minus 6, and then we'll move it over. Negative 6 minus 7.5, so you can use your calculator. Negative 6, negative 6 minus um, 7.5, that will be negative 13.5. Okay, and finally, just plug in every number, keep x, y as unknowns, because equation, x, y, is it will be unknown. So we look at this equation, and then you plug in m, 3 over 2, keep the x minus 13.5. That's it, yeah? Okay, so uh, that's a typical, like, 5 to 6 mark questions in the IB exam. All right, um, that's it for part one video, and I hope you guys find it helpful and uh, also you learned something in part one video. So if you're interested in getting more help and more videos, you can go to part two and go straight to this link. Then you can download the free videos and also free, uh, free notes, okay? So I'll cover more questions and harder questions in part two. And if you are interested in getting like face-to-face -face help uh, with our IB expert, you can sign up your trial lesson with us. So you can go straight to this link yeah so I'll uh, just click this link and then you can sign up our free trial lesson if you're Hong Kong students yeah so what you can expect uh, in the lesson so basically um, our IB tutors will uh, with over three years of experience will guide you through like in the face-to-face -face lesson which will be one hour and you'll be given full concept notes and exam questions for a specific topic and also each lesson will go through a lot of exam techniques and also exam questions just like right now yeah and uh, we'll guarantee you find the lesson and helpful and uh, also 100% satisfaction okay so um, you can just go straight to this link and then uh, if you're a Hong Kong student you get a free trial lesson yeah and if you're overseas students you can also sign up at this thing as well and our staff will arrange with you and check the time zone uh, with you guys within uh, 24 hours and here is just some proof uh, of our previous students who join our program so you can see that they all got at least one great improvement and on average they got at least two great improvement after joining our program for example like this student level four to level seven in math studies after nine months of uh, our lessons and also um, like this student uh, he got five to six uh, in his math sl exam yeah you can see that and then also we have another student here at 45 out of 45 and another 44 out of 45 who joined our lesson before so over 86 percent of students report to boost at least by two levels or more in total okay so uh, I hope our lesson will help you uh, achieve the same as well in your IB exam 202 exam is your uh, one last final exam so if you screw it up then you will have to go through uh, the new curriculum okay which I don't think you want to like learn everything again yeah so um, yeah so uh, if you're interested in getting extra video go to part two and then if you're interested uh, in getting like uh, in-person help then you can go to this link